There's a really, really quick intro to this video. What you're getting if you're watching this on YouTube is you're just getting one half or one third of the video. The first part of the video has been uh, edited out because it looks like YT is not accepting anything other than the official narrative. And when I mean the official narrative, the, the EU, uh, US, Elensky narrative with regards to this village outside of Kiev. That's the only narrative that's going to be accepted. And every other narrative will mean in the video getting taken down or perhaps a channel uh, deletion or something along those lines. So what you're getting right now, if you're watching this on YT, is just uh, one half or one third of the full video. If you want to see the full video, then please go to Odyssey, Rumble, Big Shoot, Super U, and of course, the Duran.locals.com. All those links are in the description box down below. We also have the push now that's being made at the UN to uh, to remove Russia from the Human Rights Council. That's also being prepared. Biden's given an order to remove Russia from the Human Rights Council. This is the same Human Rights Council at, at the United Nations, the Human Rights Council of which Saudi Arabia is a member. <laughs> yeah. I think it's time for Russia and China and India to do their own UN. I mean, just do your own UN at this moment in time. The, all these institutions are just, are just corrupt, tainted. They're, they're, they're completely lost. We're going to need an entire new structure, architecture, a new financial, economic, justice, legal, a, a completely new architecture. So that's uh, that's the United States now. They're trying to cancel Russia out of uh, of the UN Human Rights Council. And what else? Let's do two more quick stories. We have uh, we have Finland. As I said in my last video, Finland is preparing to uh, enter NATO. Finland has launched consultations on joining the alliance in response to Russia's offensive in Ukraine. The Finnish government will provide the country's parliament with a review of possible NATO accession by the middle of this month, the country's foreign minister, Pekka Havisto, said. There's not going to be a referendum. To all my friends in Finland who are watching this video, I don't think you're going to get a referendum. I believe they're going to bypass it and they're just going to go straight to parliament and you're going to go straight into NATO and then Sweden is going to follow suit. And then Sweden is going to follow suit. And that's how it's going to go. This is going to be a big win for, uh, for NATO. Lose Ukraine, get uh, Finland and Sweden. That's uh, it's not a bad deal, I guess, if you're NATO, is it? I mean, Ukraine is the big prize, but at least you get Finland and uh, Sweden in the alliance. Without a referendum, by the way. There's, there's that European democracy at work. And let's do a final story. This is a, let me take it to the front of this statue so everyone can see it here. One minute. All right. Matiskakis, 1827. Let's see, a great Greek, Greek leader, historical figure here in Greece. Uh, the final story has to do with France, France and Mariupol. And I ran across, uh, this, actual, this, this article was sent to me via locals, and it was on VoltaireNet, but there's been a lot of talk about France's uh, involvement in Mariupol. And I've heard stories anywhere from... Uh, from French NATO trainers and commandos who are stuck in this uh, steel factory along with the Azov guys. And that's why there's such panic to get, uh, to get these guys out. That's why they sent five helicopters, two of which were shut down. And I've heard other stories where these French commandos are not hanging out with the Azov guys, which is scandal enough, but they've actually been taken hostage by the Azov Battalion, and the Azov Battalion is saying, get us out of here, evacuate us, or else these French uh, commanders, trainers, 
are uh, doomed. So I don't know which one is fact, but I definitely know that Macron in France, they are scrambling to get, uh, to, to get something out of Mariupol, out of this steel factory. France even, uh, Macron even called uh, Erdogan and he was trying to figure out if Turkey can send a ship instead of the helicopters to get something out of there. And I think there's a lot of credible um, reports now saying that France is neck deep in something to do with this Mariupol steel factory and the Azov battalion and they're trying frantically to get something out or someone out. So this is from VoltaireNet. It says, according to the daily L'Opinion, military intelligence chief General Eric Vidaud was relieved of his duties on the 29th of March, 2022. Eric Vidaud happens to have been the former commander of special operations. On the 30th of March, five Ukrainian helicopters attempted to flee Mariupol, the stronghold of the Azov regiment. Two were shot down. The survivors were taken prisoner by the Russian army. They immediately spilled the beans. When it comes to logistical matters, troops attached to the Special Operations Command are placed under the orders of the Chief of the Defense Staff, General Thierry Bucard. But they receive the orders directly from the Chief of the Armed Services, President Emmanuel Macron. So Macron has elections coming up real soon. If this got out, that uh, French military commanders or trainers are stuck in Mariupol training NAZI Azov guys, and now they're stuck there, or even worse, being held hostage. Boy, would that not look good for Macron heading into elections. No wonder all the panic. That would not look good. There are people saying Macron even called Putin to try and find a solution. I wonder if Victoria Newland in France, as she visited France, discussed this with Macron as well. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff in Mariupol. A lot of secrets are in that steel factory. Anyway, I will leave this video right here, theduran.locals.com. Everybody, take care.